looks like both brothers lying in the grass. There we go. Look at that. There are our two cheetah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> what a lovely surprise. I oh, don't know when last we actually saw cheetah. And there, you might have spotted an interesting bird just off to the left. We're just going to scan a little bit to the left, and you'll see a comb duck. There we go. Look at that massive knob on its bill, or comb. It used to be known as a knob bill duck. It's called a comb duck. Look at that. <laughs> that is a male with a, with a big comb on its, on its beak or bill, and that's obviously to attract a female. That's very nice. I'm not. I don't think. Actually, I know. I haven't shown you comb ducks on uh, on Safari Live before. Oh, well, I haven't seen them. I don't know if you have. I'm sure you would have seen them before. But that is massive. That is. Uh, now, Kirsten says I think they've seen them with Scott before. So it's all happening here. Let's head back to those cheetah. But that's a nice new bird for some of you who haven't seen the comb duck before. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm able to see the cheetah. No, I think it's, it's interesting. I wonder if this wind or these windy conditions have basically caused them to lie down. I would have thought, um, I would have thought they um, they would have they would have moved. Because it is so much cooler and maybe easier to hunt. But they seem very comfortable down there. Resting. Now this is interesting. I'm just double checking, and um, and as I said, the, 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 that used to be known or is the comb duck that we saw. But I see again on on my app it, uh, they refer to it as the knob billed duck, and uh, so so either name is used. But but I'm going to rather say the knob billed duck because uh, these. The app that I've got has been updated, so I think that is the name that is more commonly used at the moment. Noble Duck, but what a wonderful surprise. I think it's indeed the, the wind that has caused these... Um, Cheetah to go lie down. I'm just scanning around to see if I don't find uh, find any um, any antelope or anything around here, because these areas are ideal hunting for the cheetah. Very flat, open grassland. Perfect conditions for them to hunt in. But they do still have to stalk a little bit. And then they'll use their speed. The insane speed. What's it? About 50 to 60 miles per hour. Roughly 110 kilometers an hour. Christopher, um, I'm not sure where you've heard that the cheetah are going extinct. Um, 
I mean, they are slightly endangered, um, but I wouldn't say they're going extinct. Now, the the thing with the cheetah, though, is they're very low on the predator hierarchy. So if there's a lot of competition from different uh, different uh, predators in that in the area, then um, then it it can affect them slightly because they won't be able to hunt as well. Um, or if they do hunt, then the other other predators might come and steal their kill. So they do have to be careful. Other predators would also kill them, uh, mainly lions, though, if lions came across them. But cheetah do you do have very large home ranges or territories, and um, the biggest threat would probably be man closing in on those territories. But there's still very healthy populations uh, of cheetah up in East Africa and that, and we, there are still a lot of cheetah within the Kruger, um, but um, but they they are they are vulnerable. But I wouldn't say they're going extinct, um, not at all. There's still there's still fairly good numbers of them, but they are endangered. They are an enda- considered to be an endangered predator, and uh, there's a lot of breeding programs and that that um, that are involved with the breeding and rehabilitation of of cheetah. So Virginia, these two males I think will stay together for their for the rest of their lives until one of them dies. This is a coalition, so that's why these males are together. Usually, um, cheetah or the females are often solitary, unless they have cubs. They'll look after those cubs, and males tend to be solitary too, unless they're born into or unless they're born with a few siblings, male siblings, then they will form a coalition um, of a few males together, two, three, sometimes four uh, males. And um, and that, again, is to have large territories. They will hunt and share food. Um, they'll mate with, fe- with a female uh, or females in different areas, um, but they will stay together. So they kind of look out for one another. very flat at the moment. <laughs> Alex, now I wonder if I got this question right. You want to know about the tear marks down this, the face of the of the cheetah, and um, and you want to know. I, th- I think you want to know what they, what co- why are they there? Um, now the theory is that the, and I think it, it, it is is correct. Um, the cheetah are diurnal hunters. They hunt during the day, so they've got incredible eyesight, very very good eyesight. But the theory is that those black tear marks down the face of the cheetah basically deflect light away from the eyes so that when they're looking through the the or during the day in the harsh, harsh conditions especially in the in the Kalahari desert and those places they can still see very very well because the light is reflected away from the from the eyes somewhat by those by those black markings um, and I always think I think maybe that's where the football players got it from you know sometimes they they rub the black cream um, under their under their eyes, I don't know if it helps them that much. But for the cheetah, apparently it does. It does, and that's why they have those black markings on their faces, those tear marks. Now I'm going to sit here a little bit longer and see if they move. But while they are resting, let's head to James, who's down in a riverbed. Now these cheetah haven't moved, Taylor. They're still lying down, and uh, I hope you managed to heal Herbert or Herbert heal you. Not too sure who was the Sangoma there or what was going on exactly. I'm a little bit worried, to be honest. Don't cast a spell on me, please. I 
I think this wind is definitely affecting the movement of the cheetah. They prefer lying down by the looks of things. Out of the wind, or trying to get out of the wind. Tennis all the way from Canada. Um, you want to know, or yeah, do I think the wind makes the animals more tired? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think it makes some of the guides more tired. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know so much about the animals. Um, uh, yeah, I really don't think the wind affects how tired the animals are. I think purely. I think what happens, Sam, is to be honest. I think when it is very, very windy. And you can see the cloud cover there nicely behind us. But I think when it is very windy, the animals prefer to, to rest and, and lie out of the wind. So they probably don't move as much. I don't think it's a case of being tired. I think it's a case of purely trying to stay out of the wind. So that's why a lot of the animals we've been seeing have been lying down quite a bit. Um, and these cheetah, I think, are just trying to stay out, out of the wind as much as possible. I mean, they are out in the clearing, so it's very difficult. But they're behind a little bush there. So so maybe it helps a little bit. You can see there are two vehicles south of us. Um, it's Mala Mala to the south of Cheetah Plains. And um, Jamie, you are onto something there, and you are kind of right in that you say the cheetah cubs mimic honey badgers to hide from other other predators um, or hide from predators when there are cubs. So the the theory is that the theory is that the um, the cheetah cubs when they are born, they um, they do. They, they do look like young honey badger, and the reason for that is they've got, they, they're very dark underneath, and then they've got very light or white hair all the way along the back and the tail. Now, so if this was a cheetah, for example, underneath, they'd be much darker, and then the back is very white coloration, and that is obviously mimics a honey badger or perhaps a striped polecat, um, which is kind of like a skunk. It looks like a skunk. Um, let me show you a picture quickly. For those of you who are new viewers and don't know what honey badgers look like or striped polecats, uh, let me see if I can find a picture of those animals quickly. Hold on. I, th I think they keep moving things in the book. <laughs> there we go. There's the honey badger right there. And now I'm sure there have been so many um, YouTube clips and that of honey badgers. They're incredible animals, very tenacious, not afraid of anything. They've got soft skin, very loose fitting skin. So if anything tries to bite them, they're able to turn around and bite them back. Look at those sharp claws down there on the honey badger, incredibly sharp claws. So these are renowned for their, for their bad temper and for not being afraid of anything. Um, I, I absolutely love them. And that's my favorite animal by far. And this, and then second, a close second, is the elephant. But these are my favorite animals, um, and they are amazing. So now those young cheetah, when they are born, I'm just trying to see. I don't think there's a picture of a cheetah cub in here. No, unfortunately not. But um, but those those young cheetah do have very white hair, and it, it may help... Uh, kind of camouflage or not quite camouflage but may uh, may prevent predators from going for them they might think that they look a little bit honey badgerish if that's a word but but I don't I, I don't really think so um, I think it's a bit of a theory but it, it that coloration definitely does help um, uh, a little bit 
All right, now, these cheetahs are lying down, but Taylor's got something jumping that she'd like to show you. I am indeed, James, and they are specialized carnivores because of the, the speed that they have. And they are not using the speed at the moment. <laughs> they are, well, actually, they are. They're fast asleep. That's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're not really moving at all. They're resting, and I don't think they're going to move anytime soon by the looks of things. They're staying out of the wind. Now, cheetah usually do move around during the day. They will rest in the afternoons and move around again, but then they generally go and lie down somewhere and rest in the evenings. They're not nocturnal. They don't move around as much at night. You might get them moving around, but in these areas with all the other predators around, like lion, hyena, and leopard, the cheetah will probably not be active at all. They'll just find a clearing, stay out there, and tomorrow morning early, and they'll probably start moving around again. Now, so I'm assuming they're going to hang around in this area. Uh, Trevor, no, that is a good question. The The success rate of cheetah when it comes to hunting is actually very high because they rely on their speed and they're not ambush predators like, like lion and leopard. So they are more successful. They're probably around around 60 or 70 percent um, when it comes to hunting, if not more, or successful when it comes to hunting. Uh, not quite as successful as the wild dog, who's probably the most successful, almost 80 percent success rate when it comes to hunting for the wild dog. They are very efficient hunters, 80 or 90 percent even, they, they're very efficient hunters, but the cheetah are up there, they they also good strategy and then but just the sheer speed is incredible so the success rate is quite high it's still quite windy very windy temperatures actually dropping quite a bit mm. you can probably hear all the wind in my microphone But you want to know why we can't get closer. Um, so the, the only reason, Rob, is because these cheetah are just south of the boundary of, of cheetah plains. They're on Mala Mala, the neighboring property. And um, and the vehicles from this north. So Mala Mala is considered central Sabi Sands, right in the middle. And um, the northern Sabi Sands are these areas that we are in at the moment. Now there are obviously various land owners. Now these properties, and that's what makes it so wonderful, because it's a completely wild environment, um, and there are no fences, the animals can move wherever they want. But obviously the vehicle movements over properties and, and traversing is controlled by landowners. So we just are unable to cross over onto Mala Mala, but they can't cross over onto our side. And it's purely to manage the amount of vehicles Oh, that that uh, move over the land. You can imagine if people just drove all over the show and wherever they want, you'd have a lot of chaos. So that is why we don't drive on their land and they don't drive up here. Um, and it's just a way to manage it. But the animals can move wherever they like. So that is the one benefit. Um, and fortunately for us, we've got these amazing cameras with these wonderful zooms so we can see a lot better from this position than some other vehicles, perhaps. <clears throat> James, these cheetah would most likely attack another male if they came into their territory. Um, the, they are territorial and they do fight. Now, <clears throat> it's not... Excuse me. <coughs> oh, dear. Now, it's not... Um, it's not very aggressive. Sometimes it's more of a show than anything else. But um, but they will fight, and they will um, they will definitely um, definitely either try and chase the cheetah, the cheetah out, or maybe injure him quite badly. So. 
So that is why, the, again, with the coalition, um, you know, it's a bit easier for them to keep out any. Uh, they, they can keep out any any other competition, rather, and that's that's the thing. You know, out here, to have territory, a large territory, that's success for them, and to have offspring. Nice to see them. I'm actually going to leave these cheetah now, I think. They're not moving too far, so it was wonderful to see them. And like I said, I think they're probably going to stay there now. So it was a lovely surprise. Very, very nice. Now, Taylor seems to be holding something in her hand. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Let's see.